time of year again, Thanksgiving. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Comes every year. Yes, so we are thankful for our giving and thankful for the giving each and every day of the day. Yes, so Lord. there's one thing about Thanksgiving and, and dinners and the whole nine yards. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, during the course of the year, we might do family dinners mm-hmm. and things like that. But when we do our family dinners, or uh, sometimes we do potluck dinners, that type of thing, mm-hmm. there's always that special group of people when we're asking for dishes. You know, what are you bringing? What are you bringing? But there's that certain group of people that when we ask them to join us for a dinner or a potluck meal, that we don't ask them to bring a dish. There you go. So we're not going to ask them. You know, we might ask them. We're not going to ask them. We're going to ask them to bring a plate. Right. Yes. 
even though it doesn't feel good that, that God is working that recipe in God's kitchen, and we need to step aside. But God is always still good. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, my kitchen people get disappointed in God because he does not do what they want him to do, when they want him to do it. You know, that instance, that instance, I'm, well, I talked to God two minutes ago. We do not need to be backseat drivers or short order cooks. Oh, wow. right. Either you believe in God, <laughs> or you or you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Either you believe in the recipe that God is cooking up for you, All right now. or you don't. All right. Either, or. Mm. Either you trust God, Amen. or you don't. All right. God's recipe mm -hmm. for you. It's not always for you to know. You know, you know how they have that secret recipe, that family recipe. For, oh, this this uh, sweet potato pie tastes good. Now you make it. Oh, that's a secret. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> God has the same thing. God has a secret recipe. Yes. You don't always need to. Okay. You just need to stay out God's kitchen and let God do what He does. Yeah, man. Listen. If you are not liable to get your feelings hurt. When God tells you to get out of the kitchen, tell God what you want mm -hmm. and let it go. Mm -hmm. Don't try to improve the recipe. Try to cook a meal or a blessing yourself. <laughs> Otherwise, don't ask for help then and then try to do it yourself. Right. Okay. So you know how we do sometimes. Yeah. Somebody, oh, well, can you help me do this? And then you wait about two, three, four, seven. Oh, listen, never mind. I'll do it myself. <laughs> okay. We're, we're not going there with God's blessing. We say, um, well, thank you, God, but I, I don't know. I don't want that part of my life. I wasn't really asking for that. Or maybe I can do something else. When God wants to take you the long way around, why do we take you short? Yeah. When God says, okay, this is it. You need to take the long way around because there's a blessing. In it. There's a lesson in it. And then we still insist upon it, taking the short. And then when we make a mess of it, God, can you clean this up, please? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, in the book of Job, 36 chapter, verses 23 to 33, I'll read it for you. It talks about Job's friend or acquaintance. It doesn't mean mm. quite exactly yeah, yes. what the relationship is. It's, but Elihu is trying to help Job out by explaining to him to get out of God's kitchen. Because God knows what he's doing and all the right ingredients to make a recipe work. Now, you need to uh, focus on God's greatness and all the wonderful things that God does. You know, but Job, let's just the clarity here. Job was not a patient person. Mm -hmm. You know, they say you got to be patient to Job. Job wasn't patient. Read that one real quick. Job was not a patient person. Okay? That's right. His friend was trying to help him out here. His friend was trying to help him out here. So, you know, well, Listen, God knows this. You know, you just have to be, you know, listen to God's word and how God is guiding you and do the things that, that's being asked of you. Job didn't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, uh, his friend focused on God's greatness and that, you know, we, we just need to walk in our faith. Either you trust God for the rest of you or you don't. Right. Mm -hmm. who responded with respect, allowing others to be first before offering his own response. No was going to happen. No, I got, I'm talking about God. I got to straighten this out right now. I mean, like instantaneously. I don't have time to wait. But through all this, all this, Job was still working through an affliction. <clears throat> Unlike Job, his friend was patient with the word. In case you may have heard differently, like you just said, Job was not a patient person. God was not working fast enough for him. So when someone describes a person as having the patience of Job, like I said, you might want to be there. <laughs> now, beginning at chapter 36, verse 23, who has prescribed his ways for him or said to him, you have done wrong? Remember to extol his work, which men have praised in song. All mankind has seen it. So his friend is trying to tell him, you see all the wonderful things that God is doing here. You just have to be patient and wait, and it will come to you. All mankind has seen it. Men gaze on it from afar. How great is God beyond our understanding. 
the number of years is past finding out. How great is God beyond our understanding? How many times do we understand? Or how often do we really understand what God is doing in our lives? Mm-hmm. Yeah. As we go through something at the time, God brings us through it. And how many times do we understand at that point in time that it wasn't you? Mm-hmm. It was God. Mm-hmm. He draws up the drops of water which distill as rain to the streets. The clouds pour down their moisture and abundant cloud showers fall on mankind. Who can understand how he spreads out the cloud? So he's describing all these different things that God is doing that we really don't have an answer to. But we know that God does. How he thunders from the favel. See how he scatters his lightning about him, bathing the depths of the sea. This is the way he governs the nation and provides food. In abundance. He fills his hands with lightning and commands it to strike its mark. His thunder announces the coming storm. Even the cattle make known its approach. Amen. So these are the things that his friend is describing to him, the things that God does in his recipe. And Job is still, you know, he's not listening when God says, get out my kitchen. Hmm. Look this. I'm cooking up this recipe. I know the plans I have. <laughs> the eagle is trying to get Job to understand that God has the recipe for all things. He does not need anyone in his kitchen. He knows how to deliver a meal without your help. <laughs> Job did not want to hear about God's greatness. He wanted to know why God was not sending him an answer to his request immediately. Job did not understand that God does not operate a drive through Mm. <laughs> Sometimes you put in your order, you drive through, you pick it up, and you walk away. God doesn't operate like that. No. <laughs> drive through the kitchen looks totally different from that nice, homey kitchen. Yes. Mm-hmm. The drive through, I mean, they have, okay, da, 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 you know, that everything, you know, there's, there's no thinking about it, it's automatic. But God's kitchen doesn't work. Amen. God's kitchen is not a drive. He did not allow himself to hear the message the Lehu was trying to give him. You must wait and linger in prayer to receive the order you requested. You must wait and linger in prayer. Mm. It's not a drive to. To receive the order you requested. Mm. As many people do, Job was listening to his friends, mm. going to them for advice as to what was happening to him. And God was trying to teach Job through his affliction. You know, so Job had some dumb stuff going on. You know, so he was, oh, you know, you know. Yeah, show the way you think I should do that. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm living, I'm letting, you know, my head's really bothering me. What do you think? What do you think? So he's going to all his friends for all this advice instead of listening to what God has to offer. And God was trying to tell him what to do. But he wasn't paying attention. He wasn't paying attention. And God is trying to tell us that stay out of speech. You put something out there. You want to do something in your life, and then you go in and proceed to do it without checking in first. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Before you do anything, pray it out. Well, mm-hmm. you think I'm going to take it. Pray it out. Mm-hmm. Well, can you help me? But let me pray that. I'll get that to you. How often do we delay our response mm-hmm. to a request before saying, let me pray now? How often do we refer to God before doing those big things in our lives? You know, so often we. We don't think about, well, should I, you know, we, we want the money in this new position. It means we're going to move on up in this new position. But how often do we think about checking the time? God has a recipe for us. He has an excellent recipe for us. But he doesn't need us in the kitchen hmm. trying to mix up the ingredients. And then he has to straighten it out. Right. You know, God does not need us at the stove to, to heat up the stove and, and the flame's too hot. Then he has to put the fire out. Right? That's us. God does not need us in his or her kitchen. So often we don't hear it because we're not paying attention when it says, stay out of my kitchen. You think you're missing things up. Then I got this. Let me do this. Stay out of my kitchen. So again, as you know, as we're going through this Thanksgiving holiday, mm-hmm. there, there are things that, you know, you're going to be seeing friends, you're going to be seeing relatives, 
there's, you know, you might have that family dinner. You might do the things you haven't done throughout the year. Uh, there's going to be, you know, coming in contact with more people and just different events and things coming up. Let us remember this, that when we gather together, part of that recipe that, that seems to come up sometimes, you know, that, that seems to slip into the recipe is anger. Annoying. Why they gotta come to dinner? Ain't nobody invite them. Why they here? Why they here? You know, I never did like it. I'll tell it. I know. Come on, right? You know, all these things, this anger, you have the disappointment. Well, they didn't invite me last year. Why they didn't invite me? I don't know if I want to eat the food. I just have to eat it. All of these things, you know, it just, it just messes up the recipe. It just messes up the recipe. And that's why, you know, God tells us, and we have to listen to that. And I, I'm talking about the holidays and, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up and that's right into Christmas mm -hmm. and, and our feelings and our emotions mm -hmm. and all, you know, no matter how you've been feeling all year round, it's like Dr. Jekyll and it's not. When the holidays, things change. People experience depression. Mm -hmm. People experience the things that they don't normally experience during the course of the year because the holidays, they concentrate and they do all the things. You know, there's more stuff going in the pot than as it is the uh, remainder of the week. There's more, there's more energy going on. There's more jealousy going on. There's more things going around that we have not seen in the course of the week. But if we listen, if we listen, and not try to, well, I want to do this, 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 like, okay. When you're sitting at the table, you have a dinner party and you have seating arrangements. So, mm -hmm. I'll sit so and so next to so and so because I can take it away. I'll sit so and so, I'll sit so and so over here. And everything's all arranged. God arranges the seating at a dinner party. Not for you to come switch the name. <laughs> 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 That's the best example I can give. Not for you to rearrange the right. Everything has a perfect So as as you're working, as you're cooking in your kitchen, whether you're feeding the homeless, which we're going to do as, as a church, as a community, if, no matter is what, if you're preparing a meal to feed someone in your neighborhood, as you normally get to whatever the thing you do, just keep in mind as you're in your church, how you're preparing your meal. If you had someone that wanted to, wanted to help prepare the meal, what would you tell them? If you had someone that wanted to help you out, what would you tell them? Would you say, stay out my kitchen, I got this? I got this. Would you let them come in and make a mess and then tell them, stay out my kitchen, I got this? <laughs> how, how do you do that? We have to think about the emotions and how we feel about people. Mm. How we, the holidays draw that in you. How do you feel about people? How do you feel about your next door neighbor? How do you feel about the cousin that, that's always causing trouble. Mm. How do you feel about the child? They have been nothing but trouble. Mm. But you love them anyway. Mm. <laughs> How do you feel about this? Do we set these feelings aside? Or, or are we like Job? We're just going to sit in our pain and our anguish and just, well, I'm uh, not moving past it. How are we going to handle our picture in our home? Mm. How are we going to handle what we put in our kitchen, mm. in our heart, in our mind, in the things that we do on an everyday basis? How about creating something that's going to last past the holidays? Mm. You know, sometimes you make those dishes and everything, and once in a while you have leftovers, you know, depending on how big the food is that you had over dinner. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes you have leftovers, and you prepare a lot of the we freeze it. We freeze it. We hold it. Well, we don't have this camera. We can do that with God's grace and mercy. We can do that with our faith. Walk, eat, and every day. If, if, if we think it's like too much, mm -hmm. just 
just freeze it so you can bring it out any time you want. You can relish it any time you want. You can heat it up any time you want. Understanding what went into that meal and what went into that dish. You know, Joe didn't take time to see what the ingredients were in his life. But somewhere down the line, okay, I got it. I'm going to listen. Let us not be like Joe in our kitchen. Let us not have a kitchen where you have to say, that my kitchen, but how about a okay, this way. And we can sit over here, and we can talk. And we can sit over there, and you know, we can put some music on. I don't know if it's a place we can do As opposed to telling somebody, get out of here. So as we go through our house, let us remember that your kitchen is your responsibility. Your kitchen is, is your, it could be your neighborhood, Mm-hmm. It could be your church. Mm-hmm. It could be your church. Your kitchen is what you make. But create a kitchen that you don't have to say, get out my kitchen. But you can join me in the kitchen. You can't cook. You can join me in my kitchen. that's where my recipe is. You can join me in my kitchen. Mm. You can't do the things that, that might topple things for you. Because God says the same thing. You can join me in my kitchen, but don't touch my pot. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody has that favorite pot. You know, right. that favorite piece that they, you know, that they cook with that they want anybody to touch. And that iron cast pot that somebody used to soak on water on. And you take all that time <laughs> yes. to, to maintain yes. it and, and grease it up and make yes. it just right. Yes. Okay, yes. somebody take that cast iron pot and put in some hot soapy water. Okay. It's like that. I'm not putting you out of my kitchen. That's what God is telling me. I'm not putting you out of my kitchen. And I'm just asking you to sit back and watch. Mm-hmm. And receive the blessings that I have for you. Let me do the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Don't you worry about it. Let me do the rest of it. Just try and true. <laughs> know the blessings and the plan Stay out of my kitchen. Create a kitchen that is welcoming, 